Hi everyone, Mark Washburn here from PondalgySolutions.com and in this week's pond tip I want to take a few minutes and talk about the importance of a biofilter in a small pond, particularly if your pond has fish. Um, what you see in this graphic on the screen is a cutaway of a typical biofilter design. Now, there's so many variables with, with these and how they're built and structured and what they look like on the outside and even how they're put together internally. But this will give you an example of really how they work. Basically, in this design, the incoming water will come in in this upper hose and it will be distributed into a what could best be called a pre-filter and that's in the number two position. This blue pad that you see is sort of a pre-filter to the biochamber. The water then and, and some of the organic material will then drop down into the biochamber which is where you see these cylinders with the ridges on them and that is actually the media which holds or provides a home for beneficial bacteria. They get to build up in the crevices of this of this cylinder and as organic materials get caught up in these in this bio media the bacteria will break it down and neutralize it and basically uh, you know rid the pond of it and then after that's done uh, the water will exit out this lower tube. You will see designs that feed from the bottom and release to the top. Um, pretty much anything you can think of has been used for this type of thing, but they all work in a similar fashion well, th where they use a biological process to help uh, break down some of the elements in the pond water. Particularly why this is important with fish is sort of involves something called the nitrogen cycle. You'll see that fish will take in food and plants which ultimately will create waste material. And this waste material breaks down naturally into things like ammonia and ammonia as well as nitrites are very toxic to fish and they must be uh, neutralized efficiently and quickly before they cause any problems. Well bacteria is what does this and in this cycle you'll see uh, the fish waste will, will turn into ammonia, then it'll turn into nitrites, and then it will turn into harmless nitrates which then can be used by plants again. And it's a very interesting and neat system, but the biological processes are what make this all work very effectively. Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different designs of biofilters, and here are just three examples of the many. What you see in the top left-hand corner is actually the Skippy filter. It's a do-it-yourself filter that we've talked about on our blog before. And in this particular design, you'll see that the water flow will actually come in from the top. It will fill then at the bottom, and it will create a swirling activity. The water will rise up into the into the filter pads, which are actually not only filters, but they also are home to the bacteria. And once they've gone through uh, this circulation, they'll exit uh, out of this opening in the front. Um, over to the right is a pressurized biofilter, which is more expensive than some of these non-pressurized versions. They do offer a few advantages. The, the biological media is enclosed in this chamber. It's usually never disturbed. Many of these come pre-primed with uh, bacteria in the media. They also have um, backwash capabilities because they are pressurized and, uh, and they can work quite well. Um, when they're set up correctly. In the lower uh, photograph you'll see what's actually a biological filter waterfall and this would uh, allow water to come in in the lower part of the chamber. It will go up through some basic filters and then into the bio chamber where the, the uh, organic elements are broken down and then the water will exit out the top of the waterfall. So this is just three examples of the many. If you were to look online you'll see just about every design imaginable but they all work in a similar fashion and they all use biological media to help uh, do the work. Speaking of which this is an example of some of the media that you'll see. In the top left you'll see <clears throat> what's considered biological uh, media balls uh, those crevices and the, the little indentations that you see all around are actually places where bacteria can set up shop and colonize. They're protected in there and they're looking for those kind of kind of places to set up. Um, this is actually a plastic coil which uh, when it's put into the chamber, a biological chamber like this, it too will provide a uh, a place where bacteria can connect to and set up and colonize and it also provides some filtering. In the Skippy filter, it's almost like a, a form of a Brillo pad, if you will, a, a scratch pad, which is actually used to serve the purpose of the biological media and filter. And then over on the lower right, you'll see something that may look familiar. 
if you're used to doing some work with your hair I don't but uh, for those of you who do yes those are curlers and um, in some homemade biofilters you'll see uh, these used to good effect to be uh, a home for uh, uh, the biological uh, bacteria here's a couple key tips for biofilters first of all like any of the pond mechanicals you want to make sure that you get uh, the proper size filter for your pond's gallon volume as well as the demand that it's under in terms of fish load. You must plan ahead I think and make sure that you're at least uh, adequate on this if not overdoing the filter. Uh, it's better to go overboard a little bit than under because if you're underutilized, if you're under filtered, you're just wasting your money and you won't get the effect that you want. Uh, you'll be forced to probably get rid of fish and, and lower the, the load, the fish load and influence on that pond. So plan ahead if you can and make sure that you get a, a filter that's uh, very adequate for your pond size and demand. Also many biofilters must be primed with bacteria when you start them up and you'll want to do that at the beginning of every season. If you are in a position where you clean a biofilter completely out, let's say to to get it going again, you'll want to definitely uh, prime it again with bacteria. Any time that the water flow is disturbed through those biofilters, any length of time uh, more than let's say an hour where it can dry out a little bit you'll begin to you lose beneficial bacteria in the filter chamber and so you want to make sure that you're priming them up at the start of every season uh, new upstarts um, any repair work anything done like that uh, you definitely want to make sure that you prime them and I think it's a good idea to add bacteria to the pond body anyway from time to time to make sure that uh, everything is is up to snuff and you've got enough bacteria in the system uh, as I mentioned, biofilters are meant to be run continuously. Anytime they're shut off, you, you have to assume that the bacteria is being lost to some extent. Biofilters often are combined with UV light. Some of them have them built in. Many of them are, are in two pieces, uh, independent of one another. I don't necessarily care for the combined systems. There's a certain convenience to them, but not everybody needs UV. And um, it must be understood that UV only works on green water. Uh, not on string algae and the biofilter can actually help with all these things <clears throat> if it's set up and running right biofilters can take care of a lot of these problems where UV comes into play is some planktonic algae some of these single cell algae that create green, green water they can be so small that they'll pass right through the entire biofilter process and uh, at any rate, um, sorry about that, let me get rid of that, um, they'll pass right through the biofilter uh, itself and so a UV can damage these single cells and make them stick together so they can be clumpy and easier to filter out. So, um, you know, they do work together well when you have continuous and, and chronic green water problems. Um, if you have fish, there's no question biofilters are lifesavers. I think that um, if you're if you have fish in a pond without any filtration at all it it should be a major consideration that you look at least do some research on biofilters and consider putting one in um, many people I think have a lot of water quality problems they may have algae problems they may have other issues uh, some people use plants in place of biofilters and plants can serve that purpose but it takes a lot of them and so uh, it's always a trade-off but generally you need something that's going to help uh, take care of some of the waste that the fish produce and not let those nutrient levels and the ammonia levels get up at all uh, because when you do you see problems and so that's what a biofilter is really best for. Uh, as always if you have questions about your pond or about filters in general, uh, algae problems of course that, that goes without saying, feel free to contact us and we'll try to be of assistance and I hope this short video has helped uh, uh, give you a few thoughts on biofilters and how to find one that's best for your pond. Have a great day wherever you are.